I am currently working on a completely different video, but I wanted to share with you this thing, which is PCB exposure box. It's a uh, wee bit unconventional in the way that it's uh, very thin, like very thin and very large, perhaps, if you want to comment on this, that aspect. But anyway, uh, the reason is because I was uh, watching some videos, I mean, even uh, back then uh, I was reading some things how this should work and that, well, you need a very parallel light stream and uh, otherwise this will produce like uh, shadowing effects and stuff like that and it's not completely true really. And there are also other features that uh, are quite unique to my workflow as uh, such. So. Let's uh, get on with this. So in order to do this, I modeled the light distribution with uh, Blender, which can do this. And that's quite important so you don't get like dark spots when you do like array of LEDs. Because before I was able to make even this whole PCB, I was using this thing, which is obviously handmade, and this uses quite different type of LEDs, which are not uh, like they are surface mounted, but they require some heat sinking and well. Technically, they really don't unless you run this continuously, but uh, that's another point. But yeah, so this is pretty much hand-drawn and yeah, it is ugly. Speaking about heat sinking, I did completely opposite thing that I should have done and that is that I did not connect the heat spreader on the LEDs to any pad on the PCB itself. So that was really stupid and I don't know really why I did not do that. But anyway, this uh, does not overheat when you work in like 50% uh, duty cycle. By that I mean that I can... Uh, this is my time to expose the PCB, which is 55 seconds, and... Well, maybe the 50% duty cycle isn't quite correct, but... Let, I don't do another PCB right away, so it's... It doesn't overheat really. But I should connect this and this is uh, coated with tin or tin plated basically because I wanted to this board to be reflective. But I don't think really this that important so yeah I could ha I should have uh, connected the heat spreaders. Anyway so under hood here you have power supply like so this is uh, not correct one probably but uh, maybe it is it is 120 watts, maybe even 24 volts, probably. Because 24 volts, I think, is a good voltage that will work well when you adjust the voltage with this potentiometer a little bit. You can uh, pretty much uh, adjust current bang on for these LEDs. And these are, I think, 100 watt in total. I'm not sure, maybe 120. But since I don't uh, run it continuously, it's fine for, for the power supply. Uh, yeah, there is just potentiometer to set the time. And this is this is really enough because I don't really need much more. And this is a uh, button to start and stop the exposure. It will stop automatically, but you have to reset it and then it will work again. I have some label to how I exposed these boards in the past and this is not uh, correct anymore and why it is uh, I think it's because I have started to use ink printer instead of uh, laser because it has 
with better contrast so I can afford to use much higher exposure time and so this is no longer correct but just in case I forgot I, I, had, it, I had it there so you could argue that some memory would be fine to have but really I had that and I never used such such features so I did not implement it here and you still could do it with some clever user interface tricks <laughs> since I am rambling what I would do is I would set this to zero and pressing one ah oh. ah oh. I already implemented some some feature for this thing but let's say automatic mode how it works and then you have to reset this. Okay, so let me quickly demonstrate the process that I normally do and by quickly, I mean quickly. So I use normal printer paper and normal inkjet Then I get some PCB that I cut. This is slightly oversized but I need to peel this cover off. It's always a hassle. Yep. And I place it. Well, actually, okay. Yeah, I should have cut this to size, but anyway, I definitely can. I definitely could use this piece of PCB, but it is what it is. One thing this exposure unit could use is a lid, because right now I have to put a piece of wood, and you can see that the flatness of the board is not very great so I have to press it manually which is annoying but the lid is a uh, the thing about lids is that you can't really develop such a uniform pressure around this large area that these are most of the time quite useless and you don't really know the orientation of your PCB, like you can put it like so, like so, like it could be big, it could be very thin and narrow like this one, so yeah. Anyway, so I'll press on it and start exposure now. So we can see the benefit of 120 watts of LEDs because normally people use transparent foils to achieve exposure times as low as mine basically and this is normal printer paper it works absolutely perfectly there are no issues with printing on it I mean it's printer paper right okay so I did not mix this very precisely but on the other hand I ran water pretty hot So I don't bother even with any tanks or something like that for this step because I don't have much space and I rather prefer that being limiting factor. Yep, this is now effectively clenched and I am good to go. So you see people say that you live in a civilized country, you probably have service that when you order one online you probably have it like next day or this week basically, but how about next 10 minutes, huh? <laughs> okay, so let's etch it and hope that it works. And this will be smaller flashlight, and by smaller I mean, well, normally I use this. Uh, this is uh, 100 watt f flashlight that I built, I don't know, like five years ago, maybe four, um, because I like high power flashlights. So now I bought this Cree style LEDs. This is not Cree, but it's like 20 watts or something like that, maybe even 30. Uh, 6 volts at 3 amps. Nope. 6 amps at 3 volts. So, yeah. This, is, this needs a huge ass battery and the... well... It is a little bit, it is a little bit big, quite awkward to, to even carry around, but I mean you can control power quite nicely with this. Okay, so the board is done, and here you can see the quality of this 100 micron line, 
I mean, it's not very good, but it's not functional, it's just PCB edges. So I have to send this now. I mean, this is, this is one thing that is also annoying when making PCBs. The, to cut it, it's not very easy. I mean, I have to build a machine for, just for this reason, really.